Hello world, I'm Nick Proud. I'm here today to talk about the top five programming books for modern software developers. Now, there is so much you can learn online, obviously, and some people might argue that reading books these days when it comes to tech can be a little bit outdated, but I still think that there's room for these fundamental, almost philosophical views on software development. And today I'm gonna to suggest some books that have really helped me in my career, really helped me to uh, refine my attitudes towards software development, maybe the things I design. So here are some of the books that I found really useful. So the first one that I'm going to talk about today is, it's a golden oldie, it is the pro program, sorry, the Pragmatic Programmer, it would help if I could actually pronounce it, by Andrew Hunt and David Thomas. And this book really is um, the software engineering bible when it comes to attitudes to software engineering. It talks a lot about the craft of software engineering, about how to properly um, put yourself in the shoes of the user and about how to structure your program so that you're not just thinking about yourself but the other developers that are going to be eventually working on your code. You know, it's a selfless approach to software engineering. The title underneath is uh, From Journeyman to Master. Now, I kind of don't like this sort of um, language around being a master of software engineering because I think it's kind of counterintuitive. You know, there's no such thing as a master of software engineering. But this gets you pretty close, I think. You know, one of the quotes here I've got, you know, if I'm putting together a project, it's the authors of this book that I want. And failing that, I'd settle for the people who've read their book. You know, this is, it really is very sort of anecdotal. You know, they talk a lot about projects they've worked on and almost trying to anticipate the uh, pitfalls that they fell in, uh, that you would probably fall into based on the pitfalls they fell into. So it's very much about thinking about the long term um, it's really good at explaining things like software rot, you know, because this, this concept that software degrades over time is still quite alien to a lot of people, I think. So if you're looking for a generic sort of end-to-end -end project bible when it comes to greenfield projects, Pragmatic Programmer is a good start. So looking at another one of the, I don't want to say golden oldies because that could be offensive, but um, another real real leader in the area of uh, software design is um, looking at Robert C. Martin's Clean Code. So this is an absolute classic. Uh, you'll find this um, in, I think, a lot of software engineers' bookshelves. Uh, Robert C. Martin, uh, more affectionately known as Uncle Bob, is a real pro when it comes to both understanding uh, or helping you understand how to make your code as uh, simple as possible while still maintaining some real performance and functionality, but also staying within that agile mindset. So it's very much around things like um, making things readable and then also not just for your, not just for other people, but for yourself as well. Um, and this, uh, this book goes a long way to also looking at some really concrete uh, design patterns. So for anyone who's new to the concept of design patterns um, and, and they're looking at things um, like, you know, structuring code in a, in a nicer way or they're looking to potentially um, maybe even refactor a few things or, or maybe if you're a student looking to uh, enter the world of software engineering and, and you're being asked interview questions around uh, clean code practices the solid principles for example which is a massive part of um, clean code uh, is, is all outlined in this book so i would say probably even more so than the previous book the pragmatic programmer this is something that you need to have on your desk um, and you know obviously none of these books were panacea you know you can go too far and you can follow these rules too stringently but i think um robert c martin or uncle bob is is probably the f for the forerunner he's probably the, the leader sorry in terms of um the theories around writing clean code probably my top one on this list even though it's number two Good organisation there, Nick. Uh, another book by Robert C. Martin is Clean Architecture. So same principle as Clean Code. You know, he applies the same sort of uh, attitudes to arranging things in a structured manner, but for architecture. So maybe if you're a seasoned software developer or you're moving into an architecture role, Clean Architecture is a really good place to get started. You can use this to talk about um, potential architectural patterns that you've not um, used before. 
or actually learn new design patterns that you've not used before, not talk about them. Um, and it, it also talks a lot about what a software architect is, what a software architect is trying to achieve in terms of their job. So the software architect role can sometimes be a little bit vague. Um, you know, sometimes they're quite hands-on, they're actually writing code as well as designing. Sometimes they're not writing code at all. Uh, but I think whichever category you fall into, whether you're a software architect or if you're falling into that area of software development, this book will really help you hone your skills. Uh, so can't recommend that enough, along with clean code, clean architecture, fantastic book. Another really uh, amazing book, um, and again, one that falls within the sort of classic school of, of software, engineering books is Refactoring, the, um, Refactoring Improving the Design of Existing Code by Martin Fowler. Martin Fowler is another, um, like um, Robert C. Martin, another fantastic author in this space and he talks a lot about how to maintain code essentially. Refactoring is obviously something that you're going to be doing a massive amount and I think for some software developers um, their job in a lot of sense, in a lot of um, situations, is just to re refactor code. I know from, for me, for example, when I first started in software development, I was handed a legacy code base. A lot of my job was not just to translate this old VB6 code into C Sharp, but also to refactor some of it because it just it, it was just sort of rotting. As I talked about with um, the Pragmatic Programmer, they talk a lot about software degradation and the, the code was just uh, it, it was it was worsening over time. It, it's really good at introducing you to the concept of refactoring, but also why it's so important. Um, and it gives you some really concrete tips on um, language-specific refactor, refactoring examples. So I think a lot of these, I think they're in JavaScript, if, if I remember. It's been a while since I read this. Yes, JavaScript code examples. Uh, so for web developers uh, it, specifically, this is a really good book. And I think sometimes refactoring get, often gets lumped in with um, sort of big monolith projects, sometimes uh, server or desktop applications, and refactoring when it comes to the web isn't talked about enough. So even though this book is quite old, um, it, it's, it's got JavaScript examples, so I think it's a really valuable tool if you're a web developer and you're looking to refactor a web code base. And one other book on this list, which I don't think would be classed as one of the classics, but it's been a really useful book for me, is uh, O'Reilly's Cloud Architecture Patterns. So this book is um, similar to the Clean Code and Clean Architecture book, probably not as high in quality if I'm honest, um, in that it talks about you know, design patterns and ways of structuring systems, but it's very specific towards the cloud and it's, it's really useful if you're new to uh, deploying things like microservices or distributed systems in a cloud architecture. It gives you really specific design patterns for very concrete use cases. One example being you know, processing messages in a queue, and you know it's it's quite easy to 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 spend a lot of money unnecessarily in the cloud. And so, if you're looking for something to help uh, rein you in and keep things so that you're not overspending uh, and almost leaking money uh, as opposed to leaking memory, then this book is for you. I can't recommend this enough. Uh, it's been very useful for me as someone who does a lot of stuff in Microsoft Azure, for example. So I hope these. Um, books uh, are, are useful to you. I, I definitely suggest picking up at least one or two of them. If I was going to pick one of them uh, for you to look at, I would say it's it's between Clean Code and uh, the Pragmatic Programmer. Uh, the thing I, I guess the Clean Code one is it's fantastic because it gives you some really really good design patterns. Design patterns that typically come up in questions in interviews. Design patterns that will save your life when you are up against it on a project. You know, sometimes when you're working on a project and you decide to use a particular design pattern, three months down the line when you're looking back on it, you can't thank yourself enough for actually choosing some kind of pattern. Even if you eventually feel like it's, it, it wasn't the most optimal pattern, at least you've chosen one. And these books will help you actually inform that decision. So, you know, if you've chosen a design pattern, then at least there's some consistency there. So if you're new to this idea of, of the solid principles in particular to, to refactoring or even to uh, managing resources in the cloud. I think you can't really go wrong with these books. So yeah, it's probably between the clean code and the pragmatic programmer. I really like the pragmatic programmer in the sense that it, it, it makes you think about the end user. So there's an element of UX in there as well that I think I definitely 
I, I forget sometimes, you know, it's really easy for me to think, oh, I just want to make this functional and, and performant, but then maybe not necessarily thinking about the user experience as much. Maybe that's because I'm not really as much of a front-end developer as I am back-end. So um, maybe that resonates a bit more with me. And then Refactoring by Martin Fowler is an absolute brilliant, it's absolutely brilliant book because whether you like it or not, you're going to have to change your code at some point and you're going to have to make it better. So why not preempt yourself and just start doing it now? So I found that very useful when I was dealing with legacy code bases as well, because inevitably when I get hold of those code bases, I'm going to have to refactor them. My team's going to have to refactor them. And um, it was just a really good starting point for me um, in that regard. So. Obviously there are tons and tons of software books out there and so I tried to keep this as language agnostic as possible so I tried to make it so that it wasn't related to any specific language. But there are some really good books out there which I can recommend uh, which are language specific which also talk about design patterns. That's probably another video. Um, but in the meantime I'd really love to hear your thoughts on um, the kinds of books that you look to read for design patterns. Maybe hit me up in the comments and let me know what you've been reading. Or maybe if I've missed any, any really good books then, uh, that you could suggest for me to read as well, that'd be awesome. Uh, but until then, keep coding.